Good morning, all our friends and family, friends and family of Pilgrim Branch Missionary Baptist Church. We want to welcome you into Sunday morning worship service. To all of those who are out there listening over the airways, we're just so glad you chose to come and worship with us this morning. Let us read a scripture coming from Psalms number 145. It says, I will extol, I will extol you, my God, O King. I will bless you forever and ever. Every day I will bless you. I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his generation, his greatness is unsearchable. Let's pray. Lord, you are so great. You, you, you're just above everything we can imagine. You, we can't figure you out. We don't know what you're doing, but we do know this, Lord God, that everything is in your hand and in your control. You don't allow uh, anything. Nothing happens that you don't allow or you don't send. So, Lord God, we just thank you. You send protection to us. You send covering to us. We thank you, Lord God. We want to praise you for your greatness this morning. Lord, we say have your way in us. Have your way in your people this day. Lord God, we want to give you all the glory and all the honor. Now, as we come to learn more of you, Lord God, teach us by your spirit. Enlighten us. Open the eyes and mind of our understanding that we may receive the word that's coming today. We pray for the pastor who's going to bring the message this, this day, Lord God. We say that he's anointed. Fill him afresh anew with your Holy Spirit from the top of his head to the, from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head. Lord God, may you be magnified in all that we say and do. In Jesus' name, amen. Good afternoon. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Did you know that God is more than enough for us? He's Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's our healer. And he's Jehovah Shammoth. He's always with me. And he supplies every one of my needs. Jehovah Jireh my provider you are more than enough for me Jehovah Rapha you're my healer and by your stripes I've been set free, Jehovah Shammah, you're always with me, and you supply every one of my needs. You are more than enough. Yes, you're more than enough. You are more than enough for me. Jehovah Jireh. You're my provider. Yes, you're more than enough for me. Jehovah Rapha, you're my healer. It's by your stripes. I've been set free. Jehovah Shaman, you're always with me, and you supply every one of my needs. 
Yes, you're more than enough. God, you're more than enough. Yes, you're more than enough for me. There is none like you. Hallelujah, Jesus. No one else can touch my heart like you do, oh God. For I can search throughout eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh my God, that's why my heart is filled with praise. You're Jehovah Jireh, you're my provider. That's why my heart is filled with praise. You're Jehovah Rapha, you're my healer. That's why my heart is filled with praise. You're Jehovah Shammah, you're always with me. That's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why, that's why. I that's why my heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning. Thank you to Reverend and Sister Johnson to individuals who are a gift to this body and to this community. And there is another gift that I would like to share with you this morning. It's a gift that keeps on giving. It's a gift that is available to all mankind. And that is the gift of God's word. So why don't you open up that gift to the gospel according to Matthew. The 13th chapter, verse number 24. That's the gospel according to St. Matthew. 13th chapter, verse number 24. And it reads as thus. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sow a good seed in his field. But while men slept his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sirs, didst not thou sow good seed in the field? For whence then had it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy had done this. The servant said unto him, Would thou then that we go and gather them up? He said, But he said, Nay. Lest while ye gather up the tares, y'all ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. And we're going to look at when he said, verse 2 and 8, he said unto them, an enemy had done this. And for a subject, a war between the enemy 
and the owner. A war between who? The enemy and who? The owner. Let's go to Matthew 13, a little further down to verse number 36. And this is one of the rare opportunities we get to hear Jesus expound on a text. He has told them a parable, relayed a story, and left the disciples with some questions as to what he meant about the parable. And Jesus clarifies the scenario. Matthew 13, 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parables of the terrors of the field. In other words, explain what you are talking about out there. And even when we read scriptures now, all we got to do is go to our Lord and say, Lord, please lead me into understanding of what you're trying to get me to understand. And you out there should know his Holy Spirit will guide you into greater understanding of his word. He answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man. Now the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the terrors are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the terrors are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. They shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be welling gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who had ears to hear, let them hear. Can you say amen? amen. Now, we're going to talk about a war, though, between the enemy and the owner. Now, some of you are looking at this text and saying, well, this text is talking about agriculture. This text is not talking about a war. This is an agricultural text that's looking at an agricultural metaphor. You may say there's nothing in here about a war. Normally when we talk about wars, we talk about we wrestle not against principalities and powers, against spiritual weakness in high places. Usually if you talk about war, you talk about that and talk about spiritual warfare. David said, he teaches my hand to war. You may say that would be a good scripture to use when you're talking about a war. Talk about the annihilation of the Philistines and the Amalekites. But how are you talking about a war when a text that's talking about a garden? Turn to somebody and say, I'm glad you asked. Well, when we finished... Hopefully you will, you will see the war that's within this text. Now Jesus introduces a thought that we need to focus on. He said the kingdom of heaven is likened. In other words, he's using something you can understand to explain something that you couldn't understand. So since he's dealing with a society that focuses largely on agriculture for economic empowerment. That is, if you didn't raise a garden, if you didn't plow, if you didn't rake, if you didn't harvest, then you didn't have any income. Because it wasn't so much about money in the days of Christ as much as it was about raising a crop, which you could barter the crop, in exchange for other things that you need. So he's using something that everybody, every common person could understand to explain something that was so spiritual and so abstract that it was beyond human comprehension. Are y'all with me? They understood the value of a crop. It wasn't just that if we didn't grow a crop, we couldn't eat. 
It was that if we didn't grow a good crop, we couldn't trade. So when you look at the metaphor about the crop, you are actually looking at the very economic empowerment of a society of people that is based on the premise of sowing and reaping. Seed time and harvest time. Sowing and reaping. Seed time and harvest time. And if you didn't maintain that cycle, that consistency of sowing and reaping, not only did you not have a harvest, it would affect everything in your house because you did not have the ability to keep the cycle going. Now, I want you to understand this whole notion of sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. Seed time and harvest time. You know, a lot is said about harvest time. You know, people would shout about harvest time, but they don't want to shout about seed time. They love to say, this is your harvest. You're coming into your season. You're getting ready to reap. Now, it's good when you dance about that. But reaping is hard work. Sowing is hard work. So when I say sowing and reaping, what I'm talking about is working and working. <laughs> working and working. A lot of people think, well, I'm going to work, I'm going to play, but you're going to work and you're going to work. <laughs> you're going to work to sow the seed and then there's work even in reaping the harvest. A lot of times I think we, you know, we, a lot of times I think we believe in magic in a sense. We think that we're going to plant a little bit of something, sit back on our lazy boy chair, <laughs> and reap a big harvest. Right? Just boom, whoosh. A harvest come. When you begin to understand, when you sow, and it starts when it begins to reap, when you get the first bud, you're going to have to you're going to have to go running to catch what God has for you. This cycle of giving and receiving. It's a cycle of giving and receiving. A lot of times we like to skip the give and go to the receive. But it's a cycle giving and receiving. Sowing and reaping. Working and working. Only you're working with joy. Because you're seeing some response, some value, some validation coming back into your life. Y'all follow what I'm saying? This system of sowing and reaping sustained their society. So what we're talking about in a text is not just agriculture. The agriculture, the strength of the crop controlled the net worth of the holder. Y'all follow for me now. The strength of the crop controlled the net worth of the owner. The strength of the crop controlled the net worth of the holder. If the crop wasn't good, then the net worth of the holder diminished. So this text is talking about value. If you don't understand that, let me, let me break this text down language you're familiar with. A certain man went forth and sowed good seed into his field and sent those that were up under him to tend to the field after he sowed it. While men slept, the enemy came and planted terror amongst the wheat. Now see, if you don't understand this, you won't understand why the enemy came. 
You need to understand that the man knows the integrity of the seed that he planted. He sowed good seed into the field. He knows the integrity of the seed. For you know, I planted good seed. The, there is no question about the integrity of the seed. The seed was good. The seed was so good that the jealous enemy looked over there, saw the owner plant good seed in the ground, and said, if I don't do something to head it off, he's going to increase the value in the kingdom. The enemy became jealous of the crop that would be produced by the good seed in the ground. So the enemy wanted to diminish the net worth of the crop that who the owner has. How y'all woofing this morning? So while men slept, the enemy came to plant terror among the wheat. Now the terror planted amongst the wheat tells you the limitation of of the enemy he couldn't destroy the integrity of the wheat all he could do was plant terrors around the wheat but he couldn't stop the wheat from being wheat <laughs> oh, y'all should be fought y'all y'all should baby follow me now see where i'm going with this some of you know where i'm going because you understand what's in conflict here what is up under scrutiny here is the integrity of the seed. And it makes me want to say, he that hath began a good work in you shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. You are not counting on the weather. You are not counting on the environment. You are not even counting on the soil. You are counting on the integrity of of the seed if you get your core right if it's right in Genesis it's going to be right in its conclusion if it's God in the beginning it's going to be God in the end if it was wheat when it was in the ground it's going to be wheat when you bring forth fruit the only thing the enemy could do was plant imposters amidst the wheat because he could not destroy the integrity of the wheat. See, if you, you got that, some of y'all should be dancing in your house right now. Should be dancing around your living room right now. The only people who shouldn't be dancing are terrors. Because if you are wheat, you're out to be tearing your house up right now. Because what I just said to you is that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. What I just said to you is that every tongue that rises against you, God will contemn it. If you are his in his hand, you are his in the ground. You are his when you come up. You are his when it's hot. You are his when it's cold. You are his in the rain. You are his in the middle of all kind of terror. In the midst of your enemies, you are still he is. So then, if the enemy cannot destroy my wheat status, why did he come? If he can never destroy my wheatness, why does he come? He comes to devalue the harvest. He comes and plant tares amidst the wheat to devalue the harvest. Look at the things that he's tried to plant in your life to devalue the harvest. The things, the people, the environment, the circumstances that he's planted to devalue the harvest. What the terror would do is rob the soil of the nutrients that could have fueled the wheat to be wheatier. What he do is plant tares in the same soil that could rob the soil of nutrients that could have fueled the wheat to be mightier. The wheat to be stronger. The wheat to be fuller. 
the wheat to be richer. It will extract from the ground what was meant for the wheat to stop it from being as bountiful as it could have been. And the Bible says that while men slept, the enemy came and planted terror amongst the wheat. He is not attacking the wheat. He's attacking the owner. The battle is not on you. The battle is between the enemy and the owner. He's attacking the owner. Though he has planted tares among the wheat, the wheat has nothing to gain from being wheat. It just is its wheat. The owner has something to gain from the wheat being what it is. So the enemy is not the enemy of the wheat. He's the enemy of the owner. You with me? So the wheat is caught up between a war between the enemy and the owner. That's why the battle is not yours. The battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. You've been standing here with your dukes up, swinging, punching, fighting, talking about the devil is attacking me. I'm going to lay him out. The devil is not attacking you. He's using you and your life to attack the owner. Paul said in Ephesians 1 and 18, says, I prayed for you without ceasing that the eyes of your understanding might be enlightened, that you might know what is the hope of his calling. Here's who God's calling. So I want your eyes to open up to the hope of what God had in mind when he planted you. The hope of his call, what God had in mind when he planted you. Nobody plants a field without intention. Now we just grow. But a field is always planted with intention. Nobody just plants corn while you plant it. I don't know. Just planted some corn. You planted corn because you're going to harvest the corn. You planted those cucumbers Because you're going to grow cucumbers. You have a hope. Paul said, I want you to know what is the hope of his calling. He says, I want your eyes to be open that you might know what is the riches of his inheritance. The riches of his inheritance in the saints. That you might understand what God has to gain from you. Because until you understand what God has to gain from you, you won't understand the fight that's going on. It's not about you. It's about what he put in you that the enemy doesn't want to see reach its fullest potential in your lifetime. He planted some gifts in you. That the enemy doesn't want to see reach its potential in your lifetime. He's planning some miracles to flow out of you. But the enemy doesn't want to see that reach its lifetime. He's planted some spiritual heritage, some things within you that the enemy doesn't want to see reach its fullest potential in your lifetime. But the devil is alive. In the book of Genesis, when the Lord planted Adam in the garden and set him in garden, planted Adam in the garden of Eden, surrounded him with goodness. The Bible says, then the enemy came. (laughs) Now the enemy came because what God had planted in the earth. Why? Because it's a war between the enemy and the owner. Whenever you see the enemy come, you know that there is something 
valuable nearby. Yeah. Just telling a news flash the other day about some people who were robbing cars. Mm -hmm. So it's telling everyone to keep your, your doors locked because they was walking around robbing things, cars. Now why were they walking around robbing cars? Because they felt there was something valuable within the cars. They wouldn't go robbing a car if they don't think there was nothing in that car valuable for them to get. Now, if I know you're broke, I'm not going to go stick you up. <laughs> now, sometimes you don't know and you go and you get sentenced for robbing somebody for one dollar. But if they knew all you had was some pennies in your pocket, they wouldn't come for you, Marquise. Why? Because it's all about value. The very fact that they're trying to rob you, they felt you got something valuable. The very fact that the enemy comes into the garden to deceive Eve because Eve has some value. Eve has some value to God so the enemy come in the garden of Eve to deceive her because she has some value. The very fact that the enemy attacked you like he attacked you is a sign that you have some value. Now some of y'all think just because you have to walk a long way you up on the tag, y'all need to, you know, that ain't all attack, okay? Think, shoot. They didn't have my favorite uh, food today. I'm up under attack, y'all. Okay? But for those of you who have all this adversity that's, that's boggling your mind and you sit back and say, how in the world could I have been attacked like that? People who've been attacked in your youth, people who've been attacked in your childhood people who've been attacked and their whole life have had the, the fact the very fact is that you have some value caught up in this war between the enemy and the omer scripture said the sons of God gathered around the throne and one day saying came God said unto him Job chapter 1, where you been? Same respond, I've been going to and fro, up and down throughout the earth. God asked him, what you been doing? <laughs> Seeing whom I made a vow, God says to him, have you considered my servant Job? I wonder, can God brag on you this morning? Can God say, have you considered my servant Job? How he is a faithful and upright man. He says, yes, I consider Job, but you have a hedge around Job. And if you move that hedge around Job, I make Job curse you to your face. Same pretty bold, ain't it? <laughs> that he said he can make him curse him to his face. God said, I'm going to move a hedge around him, around his property, and around his family, but not from around his soul. God said, I'm going to hedge. Look at this discussion going on between the enemy and the owner. And all of a sudden, Job's life is affected by a war between the enemy and the and the owner. Saint says if you move the hedge from around him, I'm telling you Job only serves you when things are going right. Uh, Job only serves you because look at all the cattle he has out there. Job only serves you because look at all the children you've blessed Job with. Uh, God said I'm going to show you something and all of a sudden uh, people start dying. All of a sudden, our uh, crops started burning. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, chaos broke out everywhere. Uh, Job got sick in his body. Uh, and the Bible says uh, Job lost his property. Uh, Job lost his influence. Uh, Job lost his respect. Uh, Job lost his children. Uh, and his wife told him, curse God and die. Uh, Job lost his health, uh, but Job never lost uh, his integrity. Uh, Job never lost uh, his integrity. Uh, there are some people out there 
who've lost a whole lot of stuff. But I don't care what you lose. Hold on to your integrity. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You are who you are. Don't let anybody have your integrity. Uh, your values are who you are. What God created you to be. You may cry, but hold on to your integrity. Uh, you may suffer, but hold on to your integrity. Uh, you may go without some time, uh, but hold on uh, to your integrity. Because as long as you hold on to your weakness, as long as you hold on to your weakness, uh, when the storm is over, uh, you still going to be producing fruit. Uh, when the rain ends, uh, you still going to be producing fruit. Uh, you will rise again. You got to tell yourself, uh, I'm coming out of this. Uh, I'm in a storm, but I'm coming out of this. Uh, I may get wet, but I'm coming out out of this I may have mud all over me but I'm coming out of this I will rise again you need to tell brother sister uh, Tara uh, and tell sister Tara uh, I will arise up out of this uh, I don't care if Tara's are uh, growing up all around me uh, I'm still going to be the wheat uh, which God planted me to be I'm still going to use the gifts uh, that God gave me to use uh, I'm still going to do the things the bad is not ours the bad is the Lord we're just caught up in this war between the enemy and the owner. He planted you to be wheat. Be wheat. Sometimes we look at all these terrors growing up around us, wonder what in the world going on. The battle is not ours, it's the Lord's. We just be the wheat. Even in the midst of terrors, hold own to your integrity we know the end of the story we see what's going to happen to the terrors and we're going to be caught up with our Lord he described it as his born don't get sidetracked by these terrors that planted in your life what is circumstances where is people You be the wheat, and you are valuable to him, as you are to us. God bless you. God keep you. We love you. You're valuable to God. You're valuable to us. We are here. Reach out to us. Prayer. We have a wonderful ministerial staff and it helps. If you need prayer, you need someone to strengthen and encourage you to continue on, reach out to us at Pilgrim Branch Church at gmail.com, through Facebook, or just give us a call. We're in this world, in the midst of this battle, but you know what? I know the end story. God love you. We love you. Have a great day.